great to be here. It's good to see the sun shining, right? It's getting close to uh, relay time, and we want to see this weather warm up a little bit. It's great to be here and, and to, to talk to you again and uh, give you an update on where we're at, and, and it's, it's an update to me also uh, on how many people are involved and, and the great volunteerism that we have in this event. I don't know how many of you know it or not, but April has been kind of designated as Volunteer Month. Um, it's always been amazing to me about volunteerism. And I don't know if you know it or not, if you think about it a little bit, America is, is really one of the few places in the world that has volunteers. Actually, we're, we're kind of spreading volunteerism as well as the Relay when we spread Relay for Life outside of this country. I think some of the other countries like Canada do it, but really, volunteerism is really important to our nation. It's certainly important in Relay. It's certainly important in our thriving, in our march towards a cure for, for cancer. And I want to thank you all for being volunteers, for raising money, for focusing on a cure for cancer. One thing that's, that's really important, Dave, is, is, is that cancer, we think of cancer as, as a disease. It is really more than a disease, it's, it's multiple diseases, and that's that's why we have such a trouble uh, curing this disease. It's, it's probably around 150 different diseases. For every organ we have in the body, there's a cancer. And for some organs, there are multiple cancers. And each of those cancers require a different way to treat it, to cure it. Some of them were already curing. Actually, there was one cancer when I was in medical school that was cured. And it was extremely exciting for us. Uh, I remember at the University of Minnesota, where I was a medical student, uh, because it, it came from uh, Wisconsin, just next door to us, the drug that cured this cancer. The cancer is called choriocarcinoma. And probably nobody in the room has heard of this cancer but it is a cancer of the placenta in women who are pregnant. It's a particularly disastrous kind of cancer because it can cure the fetus or the, the baby as well as the mother. But there was a drug that was developed, it was developed in Wisconsin, at the University of Wisconsin in Madison, that absolutely cures that cancer. And I remember how exciting it was in medical school at that time to actually hear that there was a drug that cured cancer because I remember seeing so many kids, especially on the leukemia wards, that were dying one after another. And now we actually, through research, and a lot of this research, research through the American Cancer Society's research program has completely turned that around so that instead of 99% of the kids with leukemia dying now in the high 90s, those kids are cured. And that is one of the big victories that we've had in my medical career. And, um, I think of the kids in this community who have had leukemia that have kicked off this relay over the years and have survived cancer and are now adults and some of them have their own teams, some of them are uh, adults and uh, have their own businesses and are now cured uh, of cancer where uh, back in the 1960s when I was in medical school they would have not, absolutely would not have survived. So about one out of three people were cured when I was in medical school and we've marched along since that time in my career through research and through uh, education and through prevention, early diagnosis, we're now curing about 70% of people with cancer. 
That's two out of three, a little more than two out of three. So now we're talking about that three out of three business. How are we going to get to that three out of three and cure three out of three people? That's going to be a big job. But we also have a lot of intensity in research right now compared to what we had, say, in the 1960s and 70s to make us go from one, to th one out of three to two out of three. We've learned a lot in that period of time through research. Recently, I read a book uh, about the history of cancer, and I think I referred to it back in June uh, when I gave the talk at the Relay. But it's called the emperor, the emperor of all diseases. It's written by a medical oncologist who is, is quite young and did a lot of research. And it's a very interesting look for me in medicine to, to look at how we've gone from the turn of the century in the 1900s over the last century and how we've marched along in how we've learned to talk about cancer, and we've researched cancer, and we've found out that it's a cellular problem, and we now treat the cell and components within the cell, within the nucleus of the cell, the genes in our, in our DNA. All of that has de been developed over the last century, and it's mind-boggling to me. The American Cancer Society is celebrating its 100th anniversary this year. Actually, the actual day is going to be May 22nd, I think, for the 100th anniversary. But when they were formed in the, 100 years ago, it was just a bunch of doctors who used to sit around and scratch their head and say, how are we going to cure this disease? We don't know what causes it, and uh, we can't do anything except try and cut it out. So now, we have a big portion of the American Cancer Society is not physicians, but volunteers like you who raise money, support cancer patients, and educate cancer patients. And many of you are cancer patients yourself. So you can share your stories, give hope to the new diagnosed people with, with cancer. So going from two out of three to three out of three is going to take more research, it's going to take more money, and Relay is going to play a big part in this. It has played a big part already, and it's going to play an even bigger part in the next jump until we can cure these 150 or so diseases. But it's also going to, and I've been thinking about this, and it's not just going to be research. There's a big component here that we have to look at as a country and as a world. Part of the responsibility for the cure of cancer is going to have to come from us as individuals. We have to look at prevention, what we're doing, what we're eating. Smoking issue is still a big issue. We've got that, and that's an issue that has to be addressed by each of us personally. So there are things that the American population or the world population is going to have to contribute <coughs> to get to this three out of three business. The researchers will be able to put out the fires, but we want the fires not to start, too, and where prevention and early diagnosis are really, really an important part of this. I want to thank you all for what you do. I mean, it is mind-boggling that to, to me that in the last 28 years what, it, what this event has brought to this city, to this county, to this state, to this nation, and now to the world. And we still got so much work to do. So we have to re-energize ourselves. We have to continue to, to work and not uh, sit back and uh, let other people do it. We've got to be all involved in this struggle, this fight to cure the multiple cancer.
answers that we know of. And when we do, I hope my grandkids are around to celebrate that day when we can say, we, we've, got, we've got it by the neck, and we, we've, we've, uh, we've got the cure for all these diseases. And we can focus on some other diseases at the same, that, that, are, that we're struggling with at the same time. Back at the turn of the century in 1900, I was reading an article the other day about where we were at. Some of the interesting statistics are kind of mind-boggling to me. But at the turn of the century in 1900, uh, the year 1900, when my, uh, my father, just before my father was born, the average income in the United States was about two two thousand dollars to three thousand dollars a year. The uh, hourly rate wage was uh, twenty two cents an hour, and most people were dying of infectious disease, tuberculosis, trauma, or accidents, and cancer wasn't even mentioned as a cause of death because we were only living to be about age 47. That was, our, that was the average uh, age of death, or that's, that's as long as we live. And since cancer affects most people that are elderly, they were dying before they, they got cancer. But now we're living longer, so we have to address this issue. We have antibiotics for curing infections. We can cure tuberculosis. We're trying to get a better handle on trauma. And we're curing more people, uh, or treating more people and saving lives uh, in people in, that are in, uh, traumatized, either through motor vehicle accidents or other forms of trauma. But cancer is one that we have to really address, along with heart disease. Those two big ones that have to be addressed. Thank you for, for being involved in Relay for Life and being a model. Thank you as, as Tacoma people for being a model for the rest of the nation for this event because you're the reason that this event has spread throughout the United States and throughout the world because people always come back to What's Tacoma doing? How did Tacoma do it at the beginning? And a few of us planted some seeds. Pat Flynn is sitting back here. She played a big role. I traveled a lot. A number of staff people put a lot of hard work into it as well as other volunteers. And Tacoma has made its mark. So I want to thank you all for being a part of that and continuing your involvement in Relay for Life, and I'll see you all on June 13th and 14th, right? 14th, 14th and 15th? Okay. Thank you for the invitation and for allowing me to say a few words to you. Thank you very much. Doug Flatt not only gave us this dream that is Relay, that he came up with while walking around the track and pursued and built, but even today, he's at work performing surgery, carrying with his own hand as well as with his inspiration. So we thank you so much. We're very proud to be your Relay.